You've just been touched by this weird slimy tentacle while drifting in the ocean. Congratulations, you have 65 seconds left to live. What you've just touched is the sea wasp, also known as the worst thing you could have encountered in the water. This is the number one most venomous jellyfish in the entire world. And no, peeing on this jelly sting isn't going to stop the complete cardiovascular collapse that's going to happen to you in 49 seconds. According to its lethality rating, or LD50, sea wasp venom is over 25 times more potent than king cobras, and 20 times more deadly than black widows. If you were able to extract the venom from a singular sea wasp, you'd have enough to kill over 1.2 million mice. And this thing doesn't even have a brain. The sea wasp alone is responsible for 90% of all jellyfish-related deaths of humans on this planet. One species of jellyfish causing more deaths than all sharks and all other species of jellyfish combined. Why is the sea wasp so disgustingly lethal? How does its venom work so quickly that it can kill you before help even arrives? And why does one sting from this freak cause our bodies to just completely collapse? Oh, and uh, time's up. You're dead. To understand how the sea wasp is so deadly, we first need to understand how this thing even hunts. I mean, after all, it literally doesn't have a brain. So how could they even know what to sting? Well, the sea wasp doesn't really think about stinging its prey, but it does have a nerve net and 24 primitive eyes around its bell. So yes, this thing can technically see you, which is quite frankly absolutely terrifying. And to make things even worse, the sea wasp isn't a drifting jelly. It can actually swim and actively hunt other things down, including you. It contracts its bell in sharp pulses and propels itself through the water with speed, reaching up to 5 miles per hour, which is insanely fast for a jellyfish. Most average swimmers can only swim up to 3 miles per hour, which means the one-touch death machine could literally chase you down in the water. Fortunately for us, the sea wasp doesn't actually see humans as prey. What it's really looking for are small, fast-moving animals like fish and shrimp. Those 24 primitive eyes around its bell aren't detailed enough to recognize shapes or faces, but they can detect light, shadows, and most importantly, movement. That's all it needs to angle its body and drift closer. Once it locks on to that movement, the jelly spreads its long, transparent tentacles across the water like an invisible net. The fish keeps swimming, unaware, until it brushes against one of them, and in that instant, Thousands of microscopic harpoons all fire at once. The venom takes over almost immediately, paralyzing and killing the fish before it can escape. But what's strange about this is that all jellies, including the sea wasp, only hunt small prey, like little fish, shrimp, prawns, and other things less than the size of our palm. So if sea wasps only need to take down animals that small, why did they evolve venom capable of killing animals even bigger than us? The answer is in what that venom actually does. Unlike most poisons that slowly work their way through the body, sea wasp venom is designed to kill you as fast as possible. It doesn't waste time numbing or weakening its target and instead goes straight for the systems that keep you alive. The venom contains a group of proteins known as porins. These molecules insert themselves directly into the membranes of your cells, punching microscopic holes through the outer walls. Red blood cells are particularly vulnerable, and once these pores form, potassium and other ions flood out of the cells uncontrollably into the bloodstream. This sudden release leads to a condition called hyperkalemia, an excess of potassium in the blood that disrupts the delicate electrical balance of the heart. Instead of maintaining a regular rhythm, your heart spasms chaotically and effectively stops pumping any blood, which means you die. But oddly enough, this isn't even where most of the pain comes from. While your cardiovascular system is being deconstructed at the molecular level, at the same time, other venom proteins act on the nervous system and muscle tissue. They trigger intense firing of nerve cells and uncontrolled contraction of muscle fibers, which is why stings are described as excruciatingly painful almost immediately. But this hyperactivation rapidly exhausts the system. Within minutes, nerve signals fail, muscle cells can no longer respond, and your whole body ends up paralyzed. But hey, at least since your nerves are fried, the pain is kind of reduced? Of course, for most victims, the pain doesn't have time to fade. 
The cardiovascular failure happens so quickly that collapse comes within minutes, and that's why sea wasp stings are so feared. While the vast majority of jellyfish stings are nothing more than irritation, this one is frequently fatal. So what happens if you're unlucky enough to be stung? Unlike snake bites, where there's usually an antivenom available, the options here are limited. Vinegar can be used to neutralize unfired stinging cells on the skin, and CPR can keep a victim alive long enough to reach the hospital. But the thing is, if you're already in the water, there's usually no one to save you before you collapse. There is an antivenom for sea wasp venom, but it has to be given very quickly, and even then, it can't reverse the damage already done. In severe cases, survival depends entirely on immediate resuscitation and advanced life support. The sea wasp alone is responsible for over 90% of jellyfish-related deaths worldwide. They're most common in northern Australia, as you might have guessed, and fatalities from this one jelly species outnumber deaths from sharks, crocs, and gators combined. Worldwide, estimates suggest 40 to over 100 deaths per year from box jellyfish stings, although the actual number is almost definitely higher. In the Indo-Pacific, many stings happen in rural fishing communities far from hospitals or proper reporting systems. People collapse in the water or die on the beach, and the cases never make it into official records. While movies have made us believe that things like great whites are the ocean's biggest danger, there is very limited risk in real life. There is a real risk when swimming in areas where sea wasps are found. What makes them especially dangerous is how invisible they are. The bell is transparent, the tentacles are nearly impossible to see in the water, and they're most active in the shallow, warm waters where people like to swim. Many victims don't even realize what they've touched until the pain hits. And then, it's already too late. You can punch a shark, but if you punch this jellyfish, you can probably tell how that's gonna go. This is the reason why beaches in northern Australia are equipped with jellyfish nets and vinegar stations. There's enough real-life fatalities that these animals are a real threat to us. But again, all other jellies seem to do just fine with having painful, but to us, non-lethal venom. So why did they evolve this way? Well, the answer isn't actually because they want to take us down, or anything of our size. Sea wasps don't see humans as prey. What their venom is really designed for are small, fast animals like fish and shrimp prey that could dart away in an instant if they weren't shut down immediately. A slow kill may confirm the kill, but the sea wasp still needs to find them and eat it. Over millions of years, natural selection pushed their venom to become faster, sharper, and stronger until it reached a point where it didn't just stop small fish. It can drop an animal hundreds of times larger in seconds. And unlike a shark or a crocodile, the sea wasp has no armor, no bones, no claws. Its only weapon, and its only shield, is its venom. Any predator brushing against its tentacle risks immediate paralysis, or even death, even if the sea wasp has no intention of consuming something so large. But how large of a creature can a sea wasp take down? The terrifying answer is, far larger than anything it actually eats. A single adult carries enough venom to kill dozens of humans which means that if something the size of a dolphin or small shark blundered into its tentacles, the total amount of venom would absolutely be enough to stop their heart. In fact, there are reports of sea turtles and reef sharks found dead with box jellyfish things wrapped around their bodies. However, in real-world cases, these larger animals almost never get a full dose. These tentacles usually brush against a small patch of skin before the animal thrashes free. For something the size of a shark or dolphin, that single contact isn't enough venom to overwhelm their entire system. Instead, they suffer localized damage, and tissue will die where the sting landed. In some cases, there'll be temporary paralysis on a fin or flipper, but usually not total cardiovascular collapse like in us. Dolphins and other marine mammals have a much denser outer layer of skin than on humans, giving them a kind of built-in armor that blunts the impact of the sting. And sharks are wrapped in dermal denticles that make their skin extremely thick and much harder for stingers to penetrate into their bloodstream. This, however, is enough to fend off almost all of these large predators. But oddly enough, there are a few sickos in the ocean that still eat these things. The leatherback turtle, for example, will actually hunt them down. Its skin is so thick, 
like leather, and covered in protective mucus that the stingers can't even get through, meaning all that world-ending venom is basically useless. There's a few other smaller animals too that avoid their stingers, but it's not as common. But what scientists are most curious about with these animals is not the danger itself, but the potential use cases of the venom. Scientists are breaking down the sea wasp toxins to see how they can be weaponized against disease. Those porins, the proteins that punch holes in red blood cells, could, in theory, be reprogrammed to attack cancer cells, rupturing tumors from the inside out. Other components that scramble nerve signals might eventually be turned into next-generation painkillers. It's a bit strange, but the most excruciating sting in the animal kingdom could help us stop pain itself. However, this definitely doesn't mean sea wasps are suddenly a blessing for us. In fact, in recent years their population has been expanding, which isn't a good thing. These jellyfish thrive in warm, shallow waters, and as the oceans heat up, their hunting grounds get larger. Places that never had to worry about them before could suddenly find transparent death drifting just offshore. The entire Indo-Pacific is becoming more favorable for box jellies, and their territory is creeping wider every decade. The problem with sea wasps is that you can't just hunt them down like a shark or net them up like invasive fish. They're fragile, nearly invisible, and breed in huge numbers. Wiping them out isn't an option. So what can we do? Right now, coastal communities rely on prevention. Nets are strung across popular beaches during stinger season, vinegar stations are placed along the sand to neutralize stingers, and lifeguards are trained to recognize a collapse that could mean a jelly sting. In some places, people even wear full-body stinger suits when swimming in risky waters. This doesn't mean you need to be permanently afraid of them when going to the beach, but it does mean you should be aware, especially if you're in high-risk waters. A sting from these jellies isn't really one you learn a lesson from. It's wraps for you after the first sting. But not all jellies are this scary. If you're interested in other jellies, check out this video we just made where we rank jellyfish species from the weakest to strongest stings possible. Some have stings even weirder than the sea wasp.